right? They also want to drive interagency interoperability, but a lot of government IT systems are siloed. Many governments, um, including the U.S. government, even just a several years ago, had multiple incompatible email systems, right? So government agencies, even within a government, have difficulty talking to each other, they, so they, but they need interoperability. Um, government wants to hire top talent, smart people, and retain them, but they also have to manage budget pressures. So you have to do more, right, with fewer but better employees and people. You want open access to information for citizens so that you can actually have better governance and transparency, but you also need to ensure security and privacy. Cloud services or shared data center services can actually help governments balance their needs and do it more efficiently, being smarter about using information technology resources. So there are huge benefits. There are other benefits. Um, you know, we've already heard about the benefits of more computing power for small business and individuals without having to have uh, constant upgrades of your own computing at your desktop. Oh, by the way, all of us who either are currently or have been in government know that the government procurement time to buy new technology and computers is very long. You can't add new capacity and computing power incrementally quickly. You have to put out, you know, tenders, which is the right thing to do, but it takes time. It could be months. In a cloud environment, you can increase capacity in minutes because you already have access through contracts to the computing power, or you have your own data center, and you can dial up capacity. You can add new people instantaneously. Um, so that's you know part of the the also the advantage of small business. It's really using computing power on demand. There are other um, uh, efficiencies. Uh, or benefits that come from efficiency and scale, including, and this is extremely important, lower per user energy costs. There's a lot of debate about data centers increasing energy costs because data centers use a lot of electricity. They have to be cooled. All of that is true. But on a per user basis, when you have efficiencies in the data center, the per user cost of not just the money, but the energy consumption declines. One of the things that we've been talking about this week is how do we add the next billion and billion after that and billion after that of people for users globally to broadband services. Um, the only way, we've already heard this, you know, that getting broadband everywhere and getting everybody connected is a goal. It's a goal of everybody in this room. So it's a good thing that we have billions of people connecting but there are costs to do that, including energy costs. Cloud computing and access to services through data centers and cloud access can significantly reduce the per user energy consumption cost. This is very important to understand. There are trade-offs, of course, because there will be costs in terms of energy for the data centers. But if we're going to add the billions of people we want to be added to the net, then we need to do it in a smart way. We need to do it in a very efficient way. So what is the challenge? One of the challenges, there's a good news, bad news, is that data centers are seen as the next generation entry into the IT business and investment by every country, province, and city. Everybody wants to attract their own data center. We all know this. Problem is, if you do that, you fragment the data, the opportunities and the efficiencies and the scale of data centers. You don't get the efficiencies. You increase the monetary cost and you increase, for example, the energy cost without getting the per user decline benefit. It's a balancing. It's very difficult. In fact, there was a study um, uh, Heather Creech from the um, International Institute for Sustainable uh, Development yesterday uh, on one of our sessions talked about a study in Canada. 
um, one of the findings was that Canadian universities are not efficiently using their own clouds and data centers and their supercomputer centers and it would, there are significant energy and money savings if the universities in Canada could combine their data centers so that they could have more efficient use and it would be a smarter use of those centers. So coming back finally to one of the questions that was raised is how do we, benef how do we balance these benefits and costs? We need scale, we need the efficiency, but we also still want diversity, we want competition, we want the distribution of these new resources globally so that they close the digital divide, not expand it. These are difficult questions and that's what the discussion is going to be about. But it's not either or. It has to be a balance and we have to do this in a very smart way.